Welcome to our YouTube channel of Applied Forensic Research Sciences. My name is Prerna K. Rao. I am an intern in AFRS. Today's topic of presentation is how hair is analyzed. We will be covering topics like introduction, sample collection, analysis, case studies and forensic significance. Let's begin with the introduction to hair. Hair is a protein filament that grows from the follicle found in dermis or skin. It is one of the defining characteristics in mammal. Hair is an important biomaterial, primarily composed of keratin. The parts of hair are bulb, hair follicle, tip, shaft, medulla, cuticle and more. Let's see what is hair analysis. Hair analysis have different meanings including examining a hair sample chemically, analyzing it under a microscope or comparing it with other samples. When blood and urine are no longer likely to show the presence of specific substance, Chemical hair analysis may be used subsequently, typically within a period of 3 months or less. The most common application of hair analysis are in the fields of forensic toxicology and forensic chemistry, which are gaining increasing acceptance. However, various alternate medicine fields also use hair analysis for environmental toxicology purposes. But this usage is controversial, evolving and lacks standardization. Let's learn about sample collection. When gathering a hair sample, it is better to have a larger sample of hair rather than a smaller one, as different hairs on the same person can contain many variations. The average hair sample submitted as a evidence ranges anywhere from 24 to 50 pieces. There are various ways to collect a sample of hair that can be used as evidence. An investigator can collect hairs they observe visually with tweezers or by hand. They can also use clear tape to lift non-visible hair from a variety of surfaces such as clothing. Other methods of hair sample collection include combing and clipping methods. Tweezers are mainly used to collect hair samples. Samples are wrapped in butter paper and seed. Control samples are collected for comparison. Now let's learn about types of analysis. Microscopic analysis is a technique that involves comparing multiple strands of hair under a microscope to determine if they have consistent physical characteristics. It was recognized as a forensic science in the 1950s and researchers typically analyze more than a dozen attributes such as pigment distribution and scale patterns. This approach has been used in criminal investigations to match hair found at a crime scene with the suspect's hair. By the 1970s, microscopic hair analysis claimed to provide stronger evidence by matching a specific person with the hair which could be presented as a proof of a suspect's presence at the crime scene. Let's see what is chemical hair analysis. It is employed to identify a range of medicinal and recreational drugs such as heroin, cocaine, amphetamines, etc. This technique is less invasive than blood tests, although it may not be universally applicable. Chemical hair analysis is commonly used to determine if a patient is compiling with prescribed drug regimes or to verify witness statements that they have not taken illicit drugs. Hair testing is increasingly used to assess substance abuse, especially in legal proceedings or situations where subject may not be forthcoming about the drug use in history. Postmortem hair analysis can also be used to identify long-term drug use or poisoning. Here in this picture, you can observe microscopic view of human hair. The scale pattern present on the cuticle is imbricate. Let's talk about some case studies related to hair analysis. First, it's about Kirk L. Odom. He was found guilty of rape in Washington, D.C. in 1982 based solely on microscopic hair analysis conducted by the FBI crime laboratory without any physical evidence. Along with a witness identification in a lineup, which researcher now shows to be less reliable than one's thought. Odom was sentenced to at least 20 years in prison. Nonetheless, DNA analysis later proved that Odom was completely innocent. Although he was released from the prison in 2003, he was not officially removed as a suspect until 2012 
and was awarded a substantial settlement by the city. Here we can see that using a hair as a evidence was not reliable. Second case is about Ricky McGinn from Texas. He was charged with murder and rape of a teenage girl and hair evidence played a key role in the investigation. Detectives discovered a pubic hair in girl's genital area. And to confirm that the hair belonged to Ricky, they conducted DNA test on the hair. The DNA test ultimately confirmed that the pubic hair belonged to Ricky McGinn, leading to his subsequent conviction for murder and rape. In this case, the hair was very helpful in convicting the criminal. Now, let's see what are the forensic significance of hair analysis. The most important forensic significance of this method is that this can be used to differentiate between human hair and animal hair. The differentiations are based on the factors like form, color, scale, shaft, medulla type, etc. Often, hair is picked up at a crime scene and used as a contributing biological evidence in the case. This can be helpful in determining the criminal of a crime and providing more information about what actually took place. Hair evidence can provide information about the race of individual and it can also show if the hair has been chemically treated or if it has been cut or pulled in a certain way. Hair evidence can also show where in the body it was located as well as genetic information such as blood type or DNA. Hair testing can also be useful in determining whether the individual was poisoned or was under the influence of drugs. Because no active metabolism occurs within the hair, many of the ingredients are preserved within it. Thus, providing a window where the individual's history with drug use can be tracked. In criminal investigation, finding biological evidence such as hair proves helpful in establishing the scope of crime scene, connecting the suspect to a weapon or the crime scene, supporting witness statements or even connecting different crimes in areas. Hair analysis plays a crucial role in forensic science, providing answers that other type of evidence may not be able to provide. For example, if someone has been poisoned, Hair analysis can detect traces of poison long after it has left the body, while a regular blood test may not. Hair analysis is also used in post-mortem investigation to determine the cause of death or investigate drug-facilitated crimes or assault. In criminal investigation, hair analysis is often used to locate and eliminate suspects, with investigators collecting hair samples from crime scene to be analyzed as a potential hair evidence. To conclude this presentation, hair examinations and comparisons are generally conducted by forensic scientists often provide important investigative and associative information. Human hair and animal hair have been used in forensic investigations for over a century. Reports abound in our literature concerning the use of human and animal hair encountered in forensic casework. These guidelines represent a recommended procedure for forensic examination, identification and comparison of human hair. Hairs are readily available, transferable and reliable. Hair examination may be used for associative and investigative purposes and to provide in information for crime scene reconstruction. DNA analysis can be performed on hair but should be performed only after an initial microscopical assessment. A full and detailed microscopical comparison with possible known source of hair should be done prior to DNA analysis. Microscopical comparisons cannot be always be done after DNA analysis which is destructive to at least a portion of the hair. These are the references that I have used in this presentation. That's all about hair analysis. Thank you everyone for listening to this topic. I hope you have learned something productive from this. If you have any doubts kindly comment down below. Please like and share our video. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel to learn about more topics. Bye guys, have a good day.